Imagine this interesting facts for a quick second. A four-year MLB veteran with a World Series championship, 118 career home runs, more walks in his early years than Barry Bonds, a batting crown, two all-star berths, and two Silver Slugger awards, and seeing a bunch of 24-plus prospects still in the minors. Okay, stop with the imagination. You probably will never hit those records in your lifetime. But they are all for the 23-year-old Juan Soto. And these records do not even spell out completely how valuable he is. Not even nearly enough. But don't worry, we will tell you more. We will also explain why the Washington Nationals will regret not being able to squeeze out a signature from Soto and why the Padres are definitely going to win a series championship now that they have Childish Bambino. We all know Juan Soto is an exciting young player in the baseball world. He has a good eye at the plate and makes consistent contact while generating a lot of power. He has excellent range in the field, he's extremely quick and makes a lot of smart plays. Let's not also forget his incredible base running skills. He takes smart paths to first base and scores often. This is why, when the trade window opens this year, MLB teams were lining up anxiously to get his signature. But the Nationals didn't look so keen on retaining Soto, they'd offered him that ridiculous contract that was supposed to run for 15 years. And it's that part, the duration of the contract, that turned Soto and his management off. The offer was $440 million, which is an average annual value of $29.3 million, far less than, say, Max Scherzer's $43.3 million a year, who Soto has outplayed in the past three seasons. When it all started, the Nationals could have approached Soto with an improved offer, but it wasn't looking that way, because reports had come out that the team were ready to open their arms to suitors of the superstar outfielder, and they had often been rather flexible with all the trade processes that concerned him, something Soto was not happy about because he is a private person. He was quoted as saying, pretty tough and pretty frustrating because I try to keep my stuff private. Truth is, even as the Nats continue to frustrate Soto, he still wanted to play for them. Since he was traded at 16 years old from the Dominican public by the Washington Nationals, he had maintained his love for the team. I've been a national since day one. Why should I want to change? I've been here my whole life and my career. I feel great where I'm at. His loyalty is another valuable thing, but they unfortunately dealt him off because if they really wanted to retain him, they would have given him a better offer. Maybe they are skeptical because Soto was not really having his best season this year. But even in a down year, Soto's still putting up numbers many baseball players only wish they could come close to. He is close to a 5 WAR, hitting 250 with 21 home runs, 91 walks in 101 games, and a 901 OPS. Let's not also forget that he is favored with age and a strong passion for baseball. And even with all the heat in the market, the 23-year-old still wanted to play baseball. When asked about all he thought so far with the trade, he had this to say. For me now, I'm just concentrating on baseball. You can't do anything about it. I have my hands tied. I'm just going to play as hard as I can and play baseball and forget about anything else. I don't make the decisions. They take the decisions. If they want to make the decision, I got to just pack my stuff and go. Now I'm going to keep playing baseball as hard as I can. Nevertheless, Soto is not the only thing the Nats want to trade off. The team itself is in consideration of being sold by its owners, the Learners. After all, the team hasn't done particularly well since they won the 2019 Championship Series. But this is not the place to talk about who wants to sell what team. We're here for our beloved Soto. His baseball cards may not be as highly valued yet, like Honus Wagner's $3 million 1909-1911 ATC baseball card, but he's surely a valuable star player. Now that he's signed with a contender, you can expect his card prices to increase significantly. Do you collect baseball cards? Let us know in the comments. Juan Soto has started a new journey which we believe would get the Padres their first championship now that he has teamed up with the likes of Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado. Remember, he was the one who also led the Nats to their first championship ever. And to be fair to the Nats, it was really a tough loss for them, which is why they ensured they got a good deal out of the trade. 
The Nats traded Soto and Josh Bell for Mackenzie Gore, C.J. Abrams, Robert Hassel III, James Wood, Jarlin Susanna, and Luke Voigt. And this trade was one of the biggest in MLB history. Speaking about it, an AL executive said, I'm still breathless by the Soto trade. The Nats insisted they were going to get an unprecedented return or not move him. And they got an unprecedented return. Have to give Padres GM AJ Preller credit for collecting that kind of talent and also for being bold enough to trade it away. They have as much star power as anyone I can remember. But some had their reservations. Another AL executive said, How can a small market team like San Diego spend that much and trade away that much of their future? Are all their teams missing out on some strategy? That may be a valid concern, but we're talking about Soto here, a special kid that still has a lot of years under his belt. Do you know what else is under that belt? Records. Soto's the only player in MLB history to record five seasons with an OBP above 400 through age 23 season, whereas his 2022 OBP currently sits at 408. Soto and Ted Williams are the only players in MLB history to record four plus seasons of greater than 400 OBP and greater than 3.0 WAR through their age 23 seasons. Soto has 52 career walks in his career, which places him at fourth all time in terms of intentional walks through a player's age 23 season. I mean, we can write a whole book after a stellar four year career, and it'll be an interesting tale. The Nationals hitting coach Kevin Long during a Zoom call with reporters was asked what he thought of the outfielder after working with him all these years, and he had this to say. He is one of the top players, not only of this generation, but you can go back generations and generations to find this type of guy. They're hard to find. I think it's his stubbornness in the zone. He just will not expand the zone. A lot like Barry Bonds was. Barry Bonds took all those walks. There were times Barry didn't see a strike for 25 straight pitches, and all of a sudden you'd throw him one strike and he'd wallop it. Is he on the Barry Bonds level yet? No, I understand that, but he's got that kind of stubbornness when it comes to the strike zone. And at that age, I'm thinking back on the players that I've had who are stubborn like that. There are quite a few. Larry, we totally agree with you. Look, maybe it's too early to call, but the Padres are already seeing dividends of the trade. In Soto's debut game, he went one for three with two walks, joining his San Diego teammates for the first time in a 9-1 route against the Colorados. Let's not forget that Tatis Jr. is yet to return to the lineup as a result of injury. When he does come, things would really get real. For now, Soto's feeling pretty good in San Diego. After the game that had a sellout crowd, Soto said in an interview, quote, It feels very cool. It brings a lot of emotions for me. It feels amazing how they cheered for me. They gave us the energy to go out there and play hard. He's also very positive about the move, and I'd said this too. For me, I never realized I was going to be traded together. I was thinking probably by myself. When I realized I was coming with Josh, we have a great relationship, and I was more excited and more pumped because he's coming. I know what kind of guy he is and what he brings to the table. I'm more than excited to share another clubhouse with him. Guess what else accompanied Juan Soto? Well, it's a chance for him to be the first player with a $500 million contract in the history of the sport. We wouldn't know until 2024 when he enters free agency, but some believe that these numbers are possible. Be sure to check out Baseball Plus for more incredible baseball videos. See you there.